Hey guys, how's it going tonight? So I'm going to be showing you uh, what I think is the easiest way to organize all of the models inside of the import library. Uh, I was actually going to make this a tutorial originally on how to take the imported models and put them into uh, Lumion's like indoor library. Um, but it turns out you actually can't do that. Um, I was able to basically get it as far as I converted the, uh, the imported files into .cgrs. Uh, unfortunately, there's kind of a further step that you have to do um, to, I guess, bring it in because it, it just wasn't showing right. So uh, to my current knowledge, that's actually not possible. Um, but kind of throughout this process, I did find a way that I think uh, is sort of the best way to, to organize your own um, imported materials. And, uh, you know, I think that the Lumion devs will be a bit happier about this tutorial. So uh, anyways, yeah, let's um, hop right into it. So we're just going to open up our Lumion and uh, we're going to open up the uh, Villa Cabrera example. Now, when it comes to the imported materials or sorry, the imported models, um, technically, you know, this is something you don't have to do. I think that you can do everything I'm going to show you in Lumion. Uh, but I find that doing it kind of outside of Lumion in the way that I'm going to show you is a lot easier. Um, and the, the specific reason is because you can create folders just like bang, there's a folder, and then you can drag and drop everything. And you can actually create duplicates of the models um, so that certain models show up in more than one place. You know, maybe if you had a, like a, certain, a certain folder that was for like kitchen, uh, but then you also had another folder for like pots and pans. So you can kind of double stack things in a way. Uh, and then, you know, you can just put all of the, uh, all the models kind of together to send to uh, colleagues if you're all working within the same firm so that you guys can um, kind of collaborate with all of your models and you don't have to have, you know, keep creating the same models over and over again. Uh, so first thing we're going to do though, uh, once we're in here, this will work with any model as long as you can basically import it into Lumion and then see it inside of the um, the folder here, the imported models. So we're just going to go to uh, import. We're going to go to the patio chair. I'll just call this patio chair 10 because I already brought it in a bunch of times. Now, so here is um, what I was talking about with the category. So we have the main, which is normally where I dump things, but uh, that's just because I've been kind of importing a lot of random stuff lately, just testing things out. Um, but I do plan on going through and kind of uh, doing what I'm going to show you in this video just to kind of organize everything. So for now, I guess we can throw this in, I don't know, let's throw this in product. Now, if I drop that here and then I hit my file explorer here and we go to documents and then uh, you should see a Lumion uh, 10.0. Um, when it comes to imported uh, models and materials, it's always going to go into your documents, whereas the actual Lumion uh, files are saved in your C drive, uh, program files, uh, Lumion 10.3. Um, it won't really apply, as I said, with the models. Uh, I know that some of you watched my uh, editing the uh, material library video um, a couple nights ago. And I do want to say that um, while I think it's really cool you can do this stuff, uh, I do think that you should kind of, you know, be careful when you're deleting and changing Lumion uh, files like this. And if you are going to go and remove stuff, I highly recommend that you have a backup so that you don't have to just re-download Lumion. Because I think that if you completely, you just wipe Lumion and re-download it, everything will go back to kind of like the factory reset. But you don't want to have to go and do that big download again. And, you know, if you do have any material saved, any model saved, then um, you'll have to uh, basically start from scratch on that if you don't uh, back that up. Uh, but let's hop into the documents here, Lumion 10.0. Now, instead of going into materials this time, we're going to go into library. Now, if we go to product, then what we have here is the patio chair 10. Uh, now, as you can see with this one, it's going to create four different files, the .lib, the .lib, .in, and then the .lib MTT, which I think might be materials, and then also the uh, .lib, and then I think that it's a text. Um, so that's actually why you couldn't do the models um, to bring it into the actual Lumion library. Because if I kind of hop in here and show you uh, Architect Edition Project Indoor Decoration. So this is what the Lumion library looks like. It's a .cgr file and a .inn file. 
And uh, I, I, I did actually try and just change the file names so that it would be a uh, .cgr file, but unfortunately it doesn't work. So yeah, that's just kind of the explanation behind uh, what I was doing. Uh, but yeah, so what we can do with this, uh, when we go back into product, is I'm gonna copy this, and then I'm gonna name this like, I'll just call this one like Greg, and then I'm gonna call this one not showing. So I'm gonna go into the Greg one. I'm gonna drop um, the four files that are associated with the imported um, models. Uh, now I'm going to get out of this. And uh, yeah, apologize for the uh, releasing the license weight here. It's, uh, as I mentioned in the last video, it's not really worth uh, me kind of editing the video to, to cut it out since it's only like 20, 30 seconds max, but it is kind of, uh, kind of annoying to do this. And I, I did try a couple of things to, you know, refreshing uh, the file, like reloading it, but it does seem that you have to, for the files to reload up, you do have to just close out Lumion, let the license reset and then hop back in. The, um, now what, what we're gonna expect to see here is I'm gonna be able to go into my uh, decor folder and my patio chair 10 should be saved there. I'm also gonna go into my Greg folder uh, and just show that it is there too. But then I'm all, the last thing I'm gonna look for is if the not showing folder is there, which it shouldn't be. And if it is, I messed something up. Um, but why this is important is you can go in to the, in like the documents where I just showed you, and you can make like a hundred folders if you want. Um, and what that's kind of nice is that you can just go through, you can almost just dump all of your models in. You don't have to worry about what folder they're gonna go in. Uh, and then you can kind of have like one, that one folder that you download everything into, you can go through and look at it and go, oh, okay, it's a sofa. I want this in my living room file. I want this in my, uh, I don't know, like outdoor staging file. Uh, maybe like a, something else, like maybe it's like a specific kind of couch that you know, you'd be able to put in like, a, uh, like in a bedroom or something like that. So then you can go through and you can have everything kind of organized the way you want it. So you're not kind of stuck saying, uh, you know, okay, like I'm looking for this one specific couch in this one specific, uh, specific folder. You can put it in five different folders so that if you say like, okay, I need something for the bathroom, bang, it's always there. It'd be like, oh, well, I need something that's specifically towels. Okay, well, now it's in that, uh, that location as well. Uh, so let's open this up. And if we go over here, so we will see Greg. Now we have our patio chair 10. And then the... Oh, I must have copied and pasted it. Oh, no, product. Okay, right. I thought I put it in decor. So it's in the product folder. So that was my mistake there. Um, so, yeah. So now what you can see is we have two identical uh, models. And I'm actually kind of curious about this. If we change, like, I, I didn't, I forgot to test this, but if we change these materials, what happens? I think that the, okay, so I think what's going to happen is that if you do this, uh, you will get the same model, but you can actually... Um, you'll be able to, um, like, how do I say this? Like, the, since they're saved in different folders, Lumion is treating them as two different, com like, completely different models. Um, so I guess that is something to just be aware of, is that if you change the models in one folder, it pro it won't update the other one. Um, and, yeah, so that's kind of an easy way of organizing it. This is for some, this, this last tip I'm going to show you probably isn't for everyone, um, but if people are like me, and it kind of bothers you that, like, when you're looking at this thumbnail, it's always kind of like, it's what the, 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 you know, obviously it's the model, like how it looks. So with FBXs, if you import them a lot of time, like if I go into my main, then you can kind of see that like a lot of these are just gray materials. Um, so I'm just gonna show you quickly uh, something that you can do to kind of like make it so it's not like that. And this is not, like this is just a bonus. You don't actually have to do this, but I know that um, I personally, you know, if I have the option, I'd like to have like things to have some color. So when I'm looking through it, I can say like, okay, you know, this this couch uh, that would fit the scene really well. And it's sometimes it's kind of hard to determine that just with the grayscale uh, thumbnail. But I'm not really sure how you'd kind of work around that because obviously Lumion is loading um, that thumbnail in. So I think that the, the actually like changing the FBX file is the only way to do that. Uh, but if someone knows uh, another way, that'd be pretty cool to uh, find that out. So uh, I had already edited this um, before. So I think if I come in here, I'll make this 
white, which is the pr uh, material preview just to be sure. Um, so then I'm gonna do this. And uh, just a disclaimer, I actually, uh, I didn't test this. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this would work because I think I've done it before, but if this doesn't work, just, uh, you know, just be aware of that. So uh, let's actually make this, let's just make this white. Yeah, so I don't know, that'll work. And uh, then I'll export this. And patio chair, I'm gonna delete that. Put that in. Uh, I won't save or whatever. Um, okay, so what we need to do now is import this before we close it. Uh, patio chair, that should be it. I'll call this new test. Now, so we bring it in like this, and luckily it did work. So as you can see, so it just kind of comes in um, sort of how we made it look in Blender. Now, if you're not really sure how to do that in Blender, um, let me know in the comments and I can make a video if people aren't really sure about how to use materials in Blender. It is actually pretty straightforward, but it does take a little bit of time just to get the hang of it. So yeah, um, literally if, if anyone in the comments just says like, I don't know what you did with the materials in Blender, I'll go back and I'll, I'll make a separate video uh, specifically so people can, um, just so that you, you have an idea of what's going on with that. Um, but just to, uh, just to say it again, the reason why I did that is because as you, you could see, the first one I uploaded had, uh, like brown wood, lime, uh, sort of like a lime body pillow and then a, a red throw pillow. Um, now I only did that just because when I was uh, first messing around with the material, I wanted three very distinct colors so that I could see the different color IDs. Uh, and then when I bring in the Lumion, I can say like, okay, that worked because originally this, um, this FBX file that I got off of Turbo Squid, uh, it was a paid one. Uh, you actually, you get the entire diffuse map kind of like put together in it. So with these models, you can't really change anything. So you actually actually take it into Blender. You can make it just a flat texture, but then when you bring it back into Lumion, Lumion says, oh, okay, these are three different textures. So uh, we can almost edit each one individually. And they're already uh, UV unwrapped beautifully and they're always uh, ready to go. So that's why I did that. Um, yeah, so I, I know that it might be a bit of a disappointment, this tutorial for people that thought I was going to show them how to do the, um, the custom model library. I, I was pretty disappointed when I found that out too, because I, I thought for sure that I knew I could do it. Um, so I do, uh, I do apologize that I said that I was able to do that in the prior video, but, uh, yeah, hopefully this is something that will sort of help you guys out. Uh, it, it could be kind of a niche sort of way of, uh, moving things around, but, yeah, as, as I mentioned, just um, you can make all the folders that you want and uh, just dump everything into one folder, in my opinion, uh, when you import them and then actually manually uh, copy or, or cut and paste um, the, the, the four uh, file types and move it into whatever folders you want. And then that way you can have uh, more than one file or sorry, more, more than one model in the folders and then you don't have to mess around with it. Um, you can have them just ready to go whenever you need them for you or your team. And uh, yeah, they can show up more than once. Just a quick recap, I'm gonna show you how to get to that. Documents, Lumion 10.0, that's what it shows up for me. I'm assuming that's what it is for everyone. Uh, library, and then this is where you can create your, um, this is where you can create all your folders. Now I made, as you can uh, note, the not showing one didn't show up. If there's nothing in the folder, Lumion won't show it. Uh, but as soon as you put anything in the file, then as you can see, it will uh, pop up here. So yeah, Greg is there, but the not showing isn't. So I'm gonna leave it there um, tonight, guys. Thanks a lot for stopping by the video. Uh, I also really wanted to thank you guys for all the support over the last uh, month and a half or so. It's really been a lot of fun making these tutorials. And, um, you know, I, I hope that uh, some of the time I've spent making these videos has helped someone out. Uh, if you have any, uh, I guess, ideas for future videos that you want to see, uh, please just uh, leave a comment and I'll try and uh, see it as soon as I can. And, you know, maybe I'll be able to make the video uh, basically <laughs> whenever I uh, get a chance to. 
Uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you could uh, hit that button for me and possibly uh, like the video. Um, I do plan on releasing at least three videos a week, but I do want to aim to have about four or five. So yeah, have a great night, guys, and uh, I will see you in the next one.